Welcome back to On Right Podcast here. You have Elijah alongside Grant. Uh, we're going to dive into another uh, Michigan week. Uh, that is, uh, we took on Nebraska, uh, beat them down pretty good, 34-3 to victory. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of going to throw it over to you. You know, overall, I was very satisfied. You know, kind of want to see what you have to say about the game and, uh, you know, how you feel about the squad so far, 10-0. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is a good victory, solid victory, just given, you know, what the game plan kind of looked like to start the game off. And, um, yeah, first team to beat 10-0 since 06, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's something to definitely be proud about and not just shoe off to the side. Um, and I do I do like how, you know, they tried to, you know, work in a little bit of that passing game, like er- earlier on in the game, just kind of see what it looks like and see if it's there. Um, you know, it didn't hit on um, as many as we'd like, obviously, but I, mean, I think it's good to just see that, you know, they're still getting close, getting close. There's one that I think should have been caught. There's another one, a couple that were just kind of, you know, overthrown. But I think JJ sounds like they're working on it pretty hard and working on it pretty heavily. So that's always good to see. Um, defense dominant as usual, run game, you know, they did what they're supposed to do. Um, I think probably key takeaway for me um, would just be, I don't know, kind of towards the end of the game. So I kind of, some people were kind of limping off the field. Um, Donovan Edwards got pulled. I think he might have a shoulder injury that he's working through that they just wanted to just like, you know, take them completely off the field and just not even, you know, deal with it or worry about it. We had a couple guys that were injured um, two weeks ago that, you know, came back and played this week. Still got some guys that sat out and, you know, I didn't love seeing Mike Morris limping off with like five minutes left in the fourth. You know, I don't, I'm not really understanding, you know, why a player like that is still, you know, in the game when the game was pretty much done and over with like mid third. Um, but overall, solid victory. You know, at this point, it's, it's survived in advance. You know, we talked about how the playoff, you know, when you're in the Big Ten, it starts a little earlier than just the actual playoff. It starts the regular season. And, yeah, just uh, looking forward to seeing, you know, how they fare against Illinois this uh, upcoming week. Yeah, no, I think you hit, you hit it right on the head uh, with, with just a solid victory uh, across the board. You know, Michigan uh, coming in, playing good November football. That's what we asked from the team, um, you know, Every week in the Big Ten is uh, a march closer to uh, the first college football playoff game, which, as far as I'm concerned, is going to be Michigan, uh, Ohio. Um, that's a, a road playoff game for, for Michigan, but I think we're, that's what we're marching to, and you have to continue to do that. I think we had another 260 something on the ground. Uh, JJ uh, had an okay passing game. You know, I mean, uh, I think he, he only had like eight completions for a buck 30, a couple of touchdowns. Uh, the one read option where they, he pulled it. And uh, right in the red zone, that's, you know, a little bit more what we're looking for, looking for when you got Blake in the backfield or even Everett for that matter, all mm-hmm. eyes are going to be on them. I believe Blake still leads the country in touchdown rushes. So that, you know, that's what we're looking for when it comes to Michigan football. And, uh, you know, I think they gave it to us again. And, uh, you know, we're, we thought a couple of weeks ago, we were looking at this Illinois game as something crazy but I think uh you know they seem to be falling a little bit so once yeah. again we're just taking care of business um and, and sharpening our tools you know you brought up the passing game and that's still needs to be worked on uh clearly um you know I you, you brought up you brought up uh in, in pre-production here just to kind of stretching the field a little bit you know starting to hit some of those 30 40 yard bombs and I think or you know whatever you want to call that and I think we we have sprinkled that in there, um, you know, mm-hmm. and we seem to come out every every game early and hit a good a good 30, 40 yard chunk. Um, that seems to be kind of our game plan. I'm noticing uh, where right off rip will 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 sneak and hit one. And I think that's that's to kind of give the confidence to JJ that, you know, you can't go out there and do this. And but we still need to see. Uh, those those deep balls landing, you know, for yeah. those, like we did in week one, week two, week three, where there's 50, 60 yard bombs, chunks, large touchdowns, um, kind of just blowing the top off the defense. We haven't had one of those in eight or nine weeks here. Just so a minute. Um, I think as successful as we have been, that we're going to need to land a bare minimum of one of those versus Ohio. To, um, and, I, and I would love to see one prior to that. But, uh, you know, the offense is rolling and, you know, JJ yeah. doing everything he's asked of, you know, playing clean football. Once again, uh, standing tall out there, you know, it was uh, start of the game snowing a little bit. It was cold. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and you know, week in and week out, the team shows up and just and, and 
Yeah, like it's 50 and no snow. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. One thing I'll say too is with the offense, one thing that I've noticed that I've been it's been good to see is the last couple of weeks, just the red zone offense. Uh JJ, he's just showing his accuracy. He's got some great accuracy. So they've let him kind of throw, you know, 30 yards on end, you know, 20 yards on end. And against Rutgers, you know, we talked about how he was getting hit, beat up, you know, a good part of that first quarter, but he threw some some dimes, you know, in the red zone. And that was something that, you know, we were kind of getting, you know. 10 on in and just trying to run it, run it, run it. It wasn't being, you know, all that successful with um, that or having to, you know, set up a field goal. So I would say just from a passing standpoint, I think we are, you know, at least taking some some strides in the right direction and being able to pass a little bit within the uh, within the red zone too. So I think it's, yeah, I think overall it's a goal to continue to help that offense just become, you know, more and more versatile. You know, I hope they do, um, you know, have some opportunities to try to hit that deep ball um, this week um, coming up um, against Illinois. Um, yeah, I, one thing I just want to ask you, <clears throat> just from like a defensive you know standpoint, I mean, I saw that we're pretty much like number one in the country, if not top five, um, you know, in the country from a defensive standpoint. Um, you know, what are your thoughts? I mean, a lot of people are saying that that might just be kind of fluke because of the competition we've been playing. Um, I personally feel like, you know, I think we've done a good job of just like showing domination. So I feel like when your defense is dominant, they still just go out and do what they're supposed to do. And I think we're shutting down teams that have no business, like, even scoring against us. And I think we're doing it in such a, like, great fashion to where the defense doesn't concern me, at least as of right now. But what are your thoughts as far as, like, you know, do you, you know, could it be I mean, not, not sort of a fluke or is it just kind of the competition or what are your thoughts there? Yeah, you know, I, I think I think it's hard to say. I mean, if you want to kind of look, look to the level of competition, I think you, we can only play who, who we're matched up against week in and week out. And yep. there are a lot of teams who have identical schedules to us who do not have the number one defense in the country. Right. So um, I would say, you know, that's what I would lead to. We're, we're clearly a good defense, but we also can only play who, who we're uh, matched up against. Yeah. I would say arguably the best team we played so far would be Penn State. And, um, and that was a complete domination game. You know, uh, you, you look at the defense in that game and they shut them down. You know, at one point, I think in the first half, they were going to, they had like, I don't know, what was it? What, I don't want to undershoot it, but they say like 85 yards and 61 of them came on that one rush. Yep. And, um, you know, that, that literally was their offense for that game. Mm-hmm. And so I would say, um, you know, that's what I would lean to is, is moments like that. Moments yeah. versus Iowa. Obviously, Iowa was not an offensive powerhouse but that defense stepped up at the end of the game and put the vice grips on. And that, that was some of the most, one of the more dominating series that you can put to in all accounts football this, this year. Right. Uh, and we were, you know, we were at the ones imposing that. So I would say overall, I, I, I feel like the defense is, you know, I, that's who I feel very confident in. You know, yeah. I think, I think, you know, um, now just to kind of flip the table a little bit, I think we do we do have we we tend to give up the deep ball every now and then. Um, you know, teams they, that's what they want to do versus that's what um, Michigan State tried to do. That's what um, uh, Maryland tried to do. That's yeah. what you know, that's what every team is trying attempting to do. That's what Ohio State will attempt to do. And mm-hmm. I, so that's if you want to point to anything, it's um, us giving up the deep ball. Um, to a big receiver you know that's that's the one thing that we kind of m- need to work on a little bit the most glaring issue that I see but um, I don't think we can have a fluke number one offense or number one defense in the country um, yeah. because there's lots of teams in the Big Ten that would probably should be in the top five that in that case I agree I agree with that yeah like I said and I, I'm right there with you I mean you just play who's in front of you and I like you know I mean giving up only three points in the second half to like five or six different teams. I mean, and part of me is like, I don't really care who it is because just be able to do that, knowing that, you know, starters are getting pulled and just, you know, I think we're just doing a good job of just taking care of business and not like, you know, taking plays off or, you know, taking games off halves, quarters, like they're out there literally like, it's, you know, you can tell that they're like, trying to do whatever they can and not give up any points. So I just feel like, you know, obviously, like you said, playing who's in front of you and just taking care of business. And I think they're doing that and then some. And, and yeah, so we'll see how it unfolds, you know, just kind of going into um, 
this week, you know, against Illinois um, and go from there with that. But yeah, do you have anything else on the Michigan side of things before we wanted to talk about Detroit or? No, um, no I mean, I hate to throw a complete curveball here. I'm just thinking about it. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, what's up with uh, uh, Luke Shoemaker and um, the tight end situation? Oh. I think we're down another, you know, obviously yeah. the call, one of the best tight ends in Big Ten uh, out. Uh, uh, he's been stepping in, being a great, great uh, step in, um, you know, playing just like he's one of the best tight ends in the Big Ten, honestly. So, absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's kind of tough to go down. Now we're down to freshman Loveland, who made some plays as well. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it would be great to be full strength at tight end. Do you know what's happening with that? Uh, I think <clears throat> uh, I noticed in that Rutgers game, I think when he got a little banged up, I believe, and he ended up coming out with like a shoulder brace on. Um, I'll assume that's what the, you know, what the case might be to keep, usually keep injuries to players like under wraps quite a bit. I'm, I'm sure we'll learn more about it as the week goes on this week and just kind of seeing who will be available. But, you know, hopefully not anything, you know, hopefully more of just like a precautionary side of things to where they just either hold them out for this week or hold them out for next week. Um, but yeah, wish that there was more information around, you know, at least oh, fair enough. the status was, but it is what it is. Yeah, no, and I think I think just want something I wanted to know, and uh, I think just talking about the team get getting a lot of players back off injury, and that'd be the Detroit Lions. Yeah, uh, you know their defense is starting to get a little more full strength. Um, young players stepping in, coming into their own, whether it's a uh, Hutch or Kirby Joseph or you know whoever the case may be. Yeah. So you know, I kind of one they pulled it out, uh, got uh, got a victory versus the Chicago Bears on the road. Um, you know, mm-hmm. kind of what what are your thoughts on you know what you've seen and kind of, you know, I don't want to say moving forward with the team, but, you know, kind of what were your thoughts on that game in particular for what it means? Yeah. No, I think we've got some serious pieces on defense. Um, just, you know, from no one understanding, just like from a talent standpoint, might not be all the way there, you know, competing with like majority of the teams in the NFL, but you named a couple of the guys. I mean, I think Hutch, you know, besides that three sack game against Washington, I mean, I feel like this is probably one of the better games I've seen him play. Um, He's still just out of position a little bit here and there, but he had a great play on the goal line, you know, basically like, like RKO the running back before <laughs> so they got the, the handoff. I thought that was pretty – I mean, just like, you know, that's just so in like athleticism and just being able to get there sooner, pretty much as soon as – I mean, if there would have been an extra second, he might have been able to, you know, even affect the quarterback's running back handoff. So it was cool just seeing him do that, um, getting a big sack in, uh, in, in crunch time. He was also pressuring uh, fields when he threw that – pick six to Okuda. Um, so he's definitely, you know, he's not in the right place all the time, but he's, I can tell he's just starting to kind of, he's starting to figure it out as the, uh, as the season goes on. I mean, I think he's leading all rookies in sacks and pressure still. Um, and then, yeah, and just showing to him, he had like eight tackles. You don't really see DNs is having like a ton of, so I, I mean, I just saw him like running plays down, you know, play might be going away from him, but he's still giving that full effort. Um, and, yeah, and Joseph too. I mean, I think it's good. It's good seeing Kirby Joseph out there, especially with Tracy Walker, you know, out for the season, you know, it shows that, you know, we at least have somebody back there that can fill the void or, you know, play beside Tracy potentially, whatever that kind of looks like. And um, yeah, you don't love getting down 14 the way that they did, you know, offense is still a little shaky offense with a little shaky here and there, but they had to put together a couple solid drives to, uh, you know, to help us pull out that victory overall. So I'd say it was a solid win. Um, for given the circumstances, you know, where we kind of put ourselves, um, you know, come, you know, before that come, we made that comeback. Yeah. I, I, I give it to him a little bit. I tip my head a little bit. I think it was, I had him dead in the water. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie. I, you know, we, we both watched last week's episode the week before, you know, I think we were, um, you know, kind of feeding for victory if, if, if nothing else, yeah, you know, yeah. Kind of just down on the squad in general. So I think it does show a little bit of fight now, what this will mean if, you know, you know, going forward, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, they can still come out and, you know, kind of go over the rest of the way, you know, you know, like I said, uh, last week, you don't know who, what teams are going to show up number on offense, worst defense, defense right. that's making plays now, you know, what, you know, it's kind of a, a, a whirlwind on who's going to show up. So that's kind of tough, a tough, uh, to analyze, but, you know, you're talking about Hutch. I think, uh, that's five and a half sacks on the season. Um, you know, yeah, three three did come in one game, but you know, that's even showed domination in that game. But you know, uh, you're you're seeing him 
come into his own. You know, I, I've seen somebody on Twitter talk about uh, his success when he stands up versus in a uh, three-point stance. And, you know, maybe that's the answer to keep, get him standing up. And that's what he did all at Michigan. Uh, you know, that's what he was uh, bred to do there. Obviously, it worked. I think he had like 14 sacks uh, senior year. Yeah. So um, I've seen I've seen some people talk about that. So maybe it's maybe it's that's a quick fix is just to get him to stand up. because That's more what he's used to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in general, uh, you can lean to him and say he's going to be a staple of this defense. Um, you know, I think uh, he's on pace for what probably not uh, eight nine sacks. You know, yeah. uh, about a sack every every other game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can really do something with that, build on that from your friend, uh, rookie year. Uh, Kirby Joseph, another guy, uh, another Big Ten guy. And he, other than he got blown, he got uh, kind of exposed on that one deep ball. Um, but, you know, that's a live and a learn. That, that, that obviously happens to safeties um, oh, yeah. um, time to time anyway, uh, even, the be- even the best of the best. But that's a live and learn situation. Um, he's still a rookie. And, and then uh, very shortly after, he was flying around making plays. You know, also, Tim, I had Jeff Okuda, you know, a guy that uh, we've been I've been down bad on, um, you know, ever since he got drafted, maybe maybe a little too high, uh, getting picked on injury, coming back, not looking so hot at the start of the year. Uh, you know, he had a game, uh, you know, first pick six in four years in, uh, for the Lions. And, uh, you know, he was he was the one doing that. So I think overall, you know, he's coming in, he's coming to his own as well. And I think even if I do think there was some of that, Hey, I'm going to step up and play big versus a guy that I probably was a freshman on my senior year squad. But <laughs> I think, um, yeah, they kind of had a crazy little interaction there too. pick six. And then he, yeah, he took it to the crib. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, yeah. And obviously fields ran all over us, but we did just enough. Uh, the defense stepped up and made timely plays. And, um, you mm-hmm. know, I think they, they took advantage of a young quarterback, which is what you want a team to do. You know, you're going to have to, steal those wins um, when, when those are in front of you like this. So that's, yeah. this is one where we can talk about, um, you know, obviously one play away here or there, completely different conversation, you know, um, right. They did have the ball in their hands going, you know, marching, marching down the field and just a guy little, little too young, uh, maybe a little inexperienced with trying to, you know, put together game winning drives. Um, but all in all, I, I do, I do tip my hat to them. They played very well. Um, you know, uh, I mean, 150 on the ground is, is rough uh, from a quarterback, but you know, defense made plays. Yeah, and, uh, I do want to tip my hat. Also, you you said he made, made a joke about like a WWE move, but it really was. He was flying around, and that's exactly what you want to see from the number two pick. So. Right. That. I mean, that's. <clears throat> I don't exactly remember if they ended up scoring like on that drive or whatever kind of happened there. But I mean, just guys like, you know, sometimes you get down to the one yard line and guys like, well, they're going to get in anyways. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so just the fact, just kind of seeing him do something like that was just pretty cool to see. And shout out to Jared Goff, too. Got back and forth, you know, with the defense a little bit, the Bears defense going back and forth with them and then really use that as motivation, kind of woke him up a little bit to lead that drive. And I mean, we are down Josh Reynolds. I don't even know if DJ Shark is on the team anymore. You know, I'm around St. Brown. <laughs> Uh, it was a little banged up towards the end of the game, but I like how, I mean, I think his name, Tom, Tom Kennedy. Yep. Yeah. He made some good plays. 80, 80 yards receiving, give or take, you know, a big 40 yard reception on that final drive. I mean that, you know, granted the Bears defense isn't the greatest, but I like how we just executed, you know, we came out um, and that was a 90 yard drive, if I'm not mistaken. So just seeing like, you know, flashes of golf, we know, you know, we know what golf is like, you know, we know that you'll get the most out of when everything's perfect and he kind of starts to be the opposite once, you know, thing, everything around him isn't perfect. But I think that was one of those times where, you know, wide receiver one's a little banged up, back against the wall, not everything's perfect. You know, you're throwing at guys that, you know, might have been on a practice squad earlier in the season and just being able to make the throws necessary, sitting in there, not, ter- you know, not scared to take a hit if one's coming. Um, they just did what was necessary. And I think just the kind of, Cherry on top of everything, two uh two game win streak, both against division uh, foes. So, I mean, we don't really know what's going to come of what's going, you know, as far as the rest of the season. But just kind of having those in your back pocket, anything can happen at this point. So I'm just looking to see what they can potentially keep, you know, do going forward here. Grand Saint Lions, Lions to the playoffs. <laughs> 
I still think they finished with six, six, uh, six wins. I think there's a couple more in there over the next, you know, few weeks of the season that they should be able to steal. Um, but I think this was just, uh, I'm still just kind of surprised, you know, they're able to pull it out the way that they were. Um, but yeah, it's huge that they were against division opponents. And that's the time that kind of stuff does, you know, come into play. If you control, you know, if you, if they continue to play well, it could, it could benefit us in, you know, in some way, maybe. No, I still think six is uh, slightly generous. Um, but I do think, um, you know, who, who knows at this point, it's uh, right. group, so. You like to like to get, I mean, you got the bears on the road. So now they got to come to Detroit, you yeah. know, so that's already. Why didn't you the playoffs? <laughs> Heck, out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, no. You got anything else? Anything else for the people? Oh, that's all I got. Um, good week of football. You know, this is a rare occasion where Michigan and the Lions both pull out a victory in the same weekend. So we'll, we'll see what happens this upcoming weekend. Yeah, uh, we'll be back at it uh, Wednesday. Uh, we got college football rankings coming out tomorrow. Uh, then we're going to get into uh, you know the mighty alumni, and um, yeah, see see what uh, see what happens. Sure. Until next time.